Hi, my name's Dale and welcome to my shop. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build multiples of a small part on an engine lathe. Instead of using the turret lathe over here, we're gonna use the engine lathe, uh, quick change tool post, and the DRO to produce 16 of this one part. So that's what I'm gonna show you today on metaltipsandtricks.com. Here's the part that I need to make, and I need to make 16 of these. And they're basically a wheel or a tire that runs along a track. Let me show you. So here's the part finished. Um, so it's got two uh, O-rings on it for tires, and there will be a ball bearing in each end, and then a shaft that runs through that. And here's a, a short section of track that will that'll go on to. And this track is a, a camera rig. It'll stretch out about oh, 12 feet, and I can do time-lapse photography with it, and I'll show you some of that footage a little later at the end. So this is a pretty intricate part, especially when you've got to make 16 of them on an engine lathe. But I'm going to show you how to do it using a tool post, a, a quick change tool post, and a DRO. I've got three different cutters set up, one that's going to do most of the surfaces, then the second one will actually cut the two grooves for the O-rings. And then the third one is the cutoff. Also in that mix will be a file. Um, there will be some sanding. And we also have to chamfer the inside. And we'll use a, counter, a large countersink for that. So let's get cranking. First process is to get the material out to length. And this is where all the numbers that I'm working with are set up as reference numbers. None of them are actual measurements. Okay? And I want to make that clear when I show you the chart that these are just reference numbers because I don't need to have exact measurements to make this work because they've already been figured out. So let's start turning. All right, so we're going to go in for the first cut, and this is to uh, cut it to length, basically, the final cut and a good finish. And when we're done with this, we'll end up setting the DRO to zero. And now we have our new reference number. Bring it out. We're going to go for the first diameter. And the first diameter of this is actually zero. Uh, you'll see that I set it just a little heavy on this, about three thousandths out. And we're going to make just a big heavy cut right here. We're going to engage the power feed. Let the lathe do its job. A little bit of oil. And I'm going to keep this at real time for this cut so you get an idea of how long this process really is. It's pretty quick. Okay, this last bit we're going to do all manual. So I disengage the power feed. Bring it up watching the DRO again. I'm going to keep it just a little shy of the final measurement. Uh, when you do a big shaving like this, um, it will damage your part. So you don't want to do a final cut and have a big shaving sit out there. So we're going to clear it off. Bring the tool back in. Watch our DRO. Move it in that final three and a half thousandths. And a drop of oil. Let's make this cut now. And I'm going to speed it up to save us some time. Here we come right up on the uh, final edge. We're going to go to manual, bring it right up to the numbers we need, and then back it out. There we go. Perfect. Now we have a second diameter that we need to do. So again, we're going to bring it in just shy, 0.059 make our rough cut. Let's speed it up here. Okay, clear the shaving. Now we go in for our final cut. Bring in another three thousandths. Let's do the finish cut. A little drop of oil. Remember, oil is uh, to help 
reduce the friction of the shaving coming off the cutting tool. So you don't need to bathe your whole part in oil. Sometimes that's the only way to do it. But if you don't need to, don't do it. It's just waste of oil and makes a lot of smoke. Okay, we're manual right now. Bring it up, pull it out, done. So now we're going to switch cutters. We need to make the two grooves for the O-rings. Uh, I made this cutter just special for this, of course. Now it's all going to match up right now to my numbers. Again, they're not measurements, they're just numbers. They're already preset, or I pre-designed it when I made the first part and just kept track of everything and marked it down on that uh, whiteboard that you see. Now the whiteboard, um, is just right in front of my lathe uh, so I can read it really quick and easy. I'm going to go with the first plunge cut. Now these plunge cuts vibrate a lot um, and my solution on this one was just to bring it all the way in, let it vibrate and then just hold it there for a few seconds until it cleans itself up. A little oil. Excellent. Now we're going to go for the deburring process. And on my tailstock, I've got a, um, a countersink. And that's just to clean up that inside a little bit. Boom, just kissed it. Bring it back out. Come in with a file. Clean up that corner. Again, we're just taking off some of the burrs. Sanding block, um, this is one of those foam cord sanding blocks, work really great on surfaces that are uh, contoured like this. And now we need to cut it off. We'll cut it off to length. This is a homemade, or I should say a Frankenstein uh, cutoff tool, good and heavy. I think that's an eighth of an inch um, cutter on there. Um, I got tired of working with small, small blades that kept breaking off or vibrating. I figured just that little extra friction and waste of material is well worth the stress of re relieving stress. So I just went in with a big one and made it one day and it works great. Here we go. Final cut. Boom. So here it is. The perfect part. Now I've only got 17, well let's see, 14 more of these to go I guess. Um, it's kind of fun to do this. They don't take very long, but they are pretty complicated. And it's neat that I was actually able to do so many parts on an engine lathe and do it so quickly. So I hope you've uh, benefited from this video. Till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.